Well, let's talk about Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941. I don't think anybody saw it coming, but we were in for a lot of surprises. Pearl Harbor came and we were on our way to uh, play basketball that Sunday. And then somebody said, you know, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. And first question everybody asked, where in the hell was Pearl Harbor? We heard it on the radio. And we asked our dad, where's Pearl Harbor? And he thought a minute and he says, I think it's in Singapore. So it was a Sunday morning. And, and I remember in the Southworth home, what mixed feelings was that? I, of course, I thought about my family, and I thought, oh, terrible feelings. And through the day and the days that followed, we re realized that we were at war with Japan, and that we became victims as a result, too. And we were suspect of treason, all kinds of things. And this, you know, I grew up honoring the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and the Boy Scout oath and all that thing. And it's, and it's hard to accept, but it was a reality that we faced. Mostly, if they said anything, they were sympathetic because we were all pretty good students and obedient, and, and uh, I think they were touched, too, that it affected us as students. That night, they came and they took him. And uh, before that, we'd get calls from, I think it was a U.S. somebody, I don't, we don't know who, but they asked for the consul general. And my oldest sister would, would answer and says, he's not, you've got the wrong number. And they, they kept calling and saying different things, but I think they were checking up on my dad. And I remember one day, when things were moving at a very accelerated pace. I came home from school, and there were a couple of big hockey jeans in a suit in the bedroom, going through the dresser drawers, overturning everything, going through the closet. Here I was, the All-American Nisei boy, coming in, wondering what was going on. I was told in no uncertain terms to get the hell out of the bedroom and stay quiet and sit in the living room. And that was my first encounter with uh, the authority and the seriousness of what was coming on. That was a pretty scary period for us uh, as we were pretty much isolated from the rest of the Japanese community. Uh, Several of my father's friends, you know, would come and visit, and and uh, of course they predicted all kinds of uh, dire things might happen, and uh, so after December seventh, it was uh, a pretty scary, lonely kind of an existence, and uh, we were wondering what was going to happen. Then, of course, the president signed uh, Proclamation 9066, and we knew that our days as we knew them were not going to be anymore. And they came about midnight, I think, to our house. They knocked on the front door, and then he says, we have an agent at the back door. Would you let him in? I think all of our homes were visited by the FBI. That's who searched the homes and took out whatever they thought was evidence that maybe the, the East Says were doing something subversive, which they never did. But they became very nervous because they even came to my bedroom, looked through all the drawers, and I was just a kid. <laughs> uh, so. Um, you ask about the the our feelings. It, it, we were frightened. Mm-hmm. And they went through everything. They went through all the kimonos that were in a drawer. They went through just the whole house. And uh, then they said they had to take him. 
And so my oldest sister said, well, what about market the flowers? And he says, oh, I'll be back by then. Don't worry. And he never came back until the war was over. <laughs>